Okay, and we're back. Change the title and just write down the time I'm starting this so that I can pull it out. This is going to be like a really quick and informal recap, but I just wanted to do something before uh, before the Xmas break. So uh, here we are. We're going to just jump straight into here. Uh, they've already played a lot of their games. I'm not going to do any team cover any teams in depth right now either just so you're, you're prepared so uh yeah let's take a look at a look at that first game let's pull up my notes and then let's pull out the chat so that i can read it there we are and uh pull out my notes there they are, and uh, take a look at these games. First one is Please Don't Murder Me versus Big Green... Wait, no. This is RHEL 3. I'm looking at the wrong competition. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, that would explain why so many matches have been played. Okay, 5B. None of them have been played. Okay, that's more like it. This is a admin game. Gabba's getting some a much needed break, I think. Uh, MVP on those are both great MVPs if they're actually true. I'm not sure that they are, but if they stuck, then they're good. Next is really famous medics versus Pantheon Passers, which is also an admin game. Uh, Can't table me here has been having like some sort of emergency came up. I think he might have dropped. For the last couple of weeks but uh maybe he'll come back for the last one i don't know but it, it wasn't a case of him just disappearing like he had a reason for dropping i'm just not sure what it was uh that's also an admin game ogre is getting their admin win here's the sword coast versus you're a lizardary a actual real game so uh yeah this, this was actually a draw, which is a little surprising, because the lizards have been doing pretty well, and vampires are vampires. But I suppose lizards do have a hard time playing against what is effectively even strength, even with a huge handicap like, well, like vampires have. Uh, in terms of injuries, there were some doozies here. The death was on a Saurus, not an exceptional one, but still, a dead, any dead Saurus is not good. And the vampires took two move buffs on thralls. But no injuries on the vampires, so you know, they have that going for them. Armor breaks were fairly even, but blocking was not. Lizards have nearly twice as much blocking, but the armor breaks do not re really reflect that, do they? Uh, yeah. This all tells the tale of a, sto of a game where <laughs> the lizards just had a really hard time with the vampires. And, uh... Sometimes that happens. You, sometimes that happens. But they both got a lot of good SPP. And I think they're out of playoff contention anyway. Like, uh, oh. Oh, that's, that's quite unfortunate. The Lizards, pr ha had they won that game, they would be in second place. But because they tied it, now they're in third. That is rough. They only have two weeks for, if they win both their games, they still need riding the Rottingham Rockers to drop a game. So uh, that's really rough for the Lizards. That was actually a really big draw for them. They really needed the win. Uh, next is Cowboy Doors versus High Fivers. Also a 1-1 draw. This one doesn't really matter as much for playoff chances, but it does matter a lot for team development. In this case, one of the Cowboy Doors Blitzers took a move, a not move bust, sorry, a armor bust, which is probably going to be career ending for him because he's not that special, not yet anyway. Uh, otherwise, uh, no, there were no exciting level ups off of this game. Uh, dwarfs got more armor breaks. They got one expulsion. They have a death roller, right? Yeah, they do. The dwarves have a death roller, so that's probably where the expulsion is from. 
Uh, not a whole lot of injuries for either side. Pretty even on blocks. Dwarves did brick armor more, but they have high, but they have higher armor compared to the Necro, so that's to be expected. Uh, yeah, this was clearly just a bash fest. And the dwarves were not bashy enough to out deal with the fast uh, Necro, it looks like. Not that much of SPP here, but the SPP there is, is really concentrated. Bud Grundy. No, Bud Bundy. Is that a werewolf? Frankenstein is obviously... Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Next one is Lich's Skull Crushers versus Awful Puff Heroes. Uh, this one... This game was not played, actually. They... I'm not sure what happened, but clearly they could not schedule it, and possibly neither of them bothered to post in the in the reddit thread this is why you have to post there even if you can't end up not playing your game if you post in it and your opponent does not then you will get the win it's sort of a sucky way to win but it's better than a draw at least you get spp that way more than five so uh yeah not a lot to be said there just a warning don't do this Last of all, we have You Worship Chaos versus the Rottingham Rockers. The Rockers win 1-0 to zero against the Norse. Uh, but there, this was an exciting game. You Worship Chaos suffered a dead ulf a, and serious injuries on both of their berserkers. One of them was just a missed next game. The other one is a minus movement. So, the next game, this team is going to have one ulf, no berserkers, and they're going to be in for a rough time overall. As for the Nurgle, they took a strength bust on a Nurgle warrior, and an, an agility bust on a rider, which he probably doesn't care about, and an armor bust on a rider, which he may or may not care about. It might just be line of scrimmage fodder. Uh, but it, it might also just be a fire. I guess we'll see. I guess I could just look, but I'm not going to. This is speed! Speed! Uh, in terms of the play stats, it looks like You Worship PS had better ball possession overall. So they clearly... St so they held on to the ball. The Nurgle didn't manage to steal it from them. But they just couldn't push past the wall of rotting flesh. Uh, particularly once they were down players, because... The injury dice of, of the Rockers was on fire in this game. Uh, and you know, like, you know, you know what though? Sage beat the pl one playoffs with a, a season one chaos team. Maybe Rod Rottingham Rockers can do it with a season one Nurgle team. Maybe, maybe. It is look likely he will go to playoffs. He just needs to not lose. So, I guess, I guess we'll see how that goes. Works for him. I guess we will see. He did get a lot of SPP off of this game. But no really interesting level ups. Hopefully Spirit Crusher has interesting things to show for us. And, uh... I'm gonna take a quick... Let's see if I can get this to work. Uh... I wanna show this because T-Self made it... And I think it's quite interesting. Uh, playoff bracket. Okay. And browse. It is in. Not there. Ta da! Uh, this is a little bit too big, actually. I should have asked him to make a smaller one. <laughs> Okay, can you read this? Tell me if you can read this. Please, because, uh, well, yeah, I, th I think that's readable. But, uh, l let me know for sure, one way or the other. So, uh, yeah. Did I say that the Cowboy Dwarf draw was not a big deal? Because I was lying. That was actually a big deal. Uh, <laughs> that made him, I mean, well, I say that. I say that. He is still, like, 
No, it is a big deal. Had he not gone into the draw on this week, he would have a commanding lead, and he would basically be a shoe in for playoffs. As is, as is now, he needs to. Well, as long as he doesn't, he can do a win, one win and one draw, and he'll still have it. But he can't drop a game. Anyway, him. <laughs> in the last two weeks, the this is the top four positions for this division. Uh, starting from the first place, Cowboy Dwarfs, who have a two-point lead over... No, yeah, they have a two-point lead over second place uh, with a strong uh, TV differential. They're playing the Pathers, who are the fourth-place team, and the Rockers, who are, are the second-place team, for their final two games. So both of these games are going to be really huge deals for playoffs with a huge amount of potential to uh, determine who goes in and who doesn't. If the Cabadors win, they have a strong chance of... Not only do they have a strong chance of uh, winning, of going to playoffs, they're guaranteed to go to playoffs if they win both games, in fact. But if they win both, then they also have a good chance of giving opening up the spot for your Lizardary. On the other hand, if they lose both games, then the Lizards could also go in, but we'll get to that later. Uh, the Rockers are facing the High Fivers, who just drew against the Dwarfs. And the Cowboy Dwarfs in Week 13. Uh, both of these games are important for them again. They need to win every game to stay in the second place spot, most likely. Uh, a draw against Cowboy Dwarfs could do interesting things. Uh, but High Fivers is also quite interesting. Since the Dwarfs got a draw against the High Fivers, the same might happen with the Rockers. And uh, if that happens, it that second place spot is opens right back up for everyone here. And the Cowboy Dwarf's lead becomes a lot more secure, for that matter, as well. In third place, we have Euro Lizardary with 25 points, one point behind second place, and three points behind first. Uh, they're playing y You Worship Chaos in Week 12, which is a the Norse team we looked at before, which was freaking brutalized by the Rockers. So they're going to have a hard match there. Or, no. Quite the opposite, actually. It's going to be a hard match for the Norse. Uh, the Lizards are probably going to be quite happy for the state of the Norse team because they will have a... It will definitely help their odds of uh, winning in that game. And then if... Uh, if Can't Table Me Here does not return for week 13, then this could potentially be a bye week, which is sort of a sucky way to end out the season, but also really good for the Lizards' playoff chances. Finally, we have the Pantheon Passers with 24 points, 4 points behind the lead, and 1 point behind 3rd place. They're playing the Cowboy Dwarfs next week, which is a make-it-or-break-it game for them. If they win the game, they still they have a strong chance of making the playoffs, and if they lose, they are out of contention. But, uh, probably. Unless both of these drop games, too. It gets really complicated at that point. But, basically, they need... They probably need to win this game if they want to get to playoffs. But their Week 13 game is a bye week. So if they do win this game, they are pretty much locked in. Barring something crazy happening with both of these teams. You know, crazy like them winning all of their games. I guess it's not that crazy. At the end of the day, they need to win against the Dwarfs and they need either the Rockers or the Lizards to drop a game. That is what they need. Uh, maybe both of them, in fact. Uh, yeah, because that puts them at 27, was one point behind the dwarfs. Uh, yeah. They need either both of them to drop a game and to beat the... Well, they need to beat the dwarfs, no matter what. And they need either the rockers to beat the dwarfs, or... I, I, a draw would work as well, actually. They need the rockers to draw or beat the dwarfs, or they need both the lizards and the rockers to drop a game. So uh, they're crossing their fingers for the dream. And uh, that's the playoffs for this division. Those are the playoff chances. And if you want me to do something like that for D Div C, then make a graphic for me, because that is what DSELF did. And it's terrific. Uh, but I'm not making it myself. Sorry. Now we can get rid of that. And on to Div 5C.
Okay. First game is Iron's Forge versus Frozen Dead North. Which was won by the Dwarves, 1-0 to zero over the Necro. Uh, who are in the lead here again? Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. This was a pure development game for both of these teams. So uh, it's I think it sort of played that way. Lots of armor breaks from the Dwarves. Not as many as the Necro would have liked, I'm sure. They didn't score either, so they may have gotten over, yeah, four KOs and four injuries. They took too much attrition against the dwarves to do much against them. Uh, but there were no serious injuries in this game, and there were no really interesting level ups afterwards. Just a pure bash fest from the dwarves, and I mean, I love that sort of bash fest, but it's not, it's not the most interesting thing to talk about afterwards. <laughs> speaking, speaking for, as the frequent basher. Uh... Next up is Jazz Poison who, versus Shrek All Stars with the Nec Necro, no, with the Underworld winning three to zero against the Ogres, who could just not hold on to the ball. Uh, but this victory was not without its costs. There are twelve armor breaks to thirteen. You will notice, but that does not tell the full story as there are four injuries to six. I mean, this is a little disingenuous, because these are all Snotlings. Um, and Snotling injuries don't really count. Uh, but yeah, Jazz Poison took a ton of Miss Next games off of, this, uh, off of this game, to the point where their next matchup is going to be much rougher for them. Uh, but it's not all bad news. They rolled doubles on their other line rat, and now both of the Jazz Poison line, uh, line rats have... Uh, Wrestle Dodge. And as for the Shrek All-Stars, a Snotling rolled uh, doubles. And he took Dirty Player, because that's what you take on a Snotling. It's it's the only thing they're good for, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ravenpo does have some years running, though, so he must have be picked up the ball at some point, but he clearly could not hold on to it. Such is life. Such is Blood Bowl. Next game is Kep. Actually, no, this is an admin game. Kepri do it. Got their admin win in. I don't know if they got any good level ups. It looks like they maybe did on a Tomb Guardian here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a pretty good level up. Uh, <laughs> okay then. Anyway, uh, Royal Rumble Boy for say hello to my little friends. The Nurgle beats the Goblins 1-0. to zero. Not a big win, and actually a pretty Pyrrhic one. They Both of these deaths are a Rotter, and a third Rotter got Strength Busted, so that's three Rotters down, effectively. Uh, the MVP was on a dead Rotter, and... Really, like, Agrin won this game, but he lost basically all every rider on his team um, and not to that many blocks either so well i guess in fairness goblins do foul quite a lot only one expulsion though uh in terms of inducements uh negative pro took scrappa and nabla in this game i don't hate either of those well i don't really like scrapper Scrappa, to be honest, but I don't hate him either, especially when you're down on players. It's nice to have him just because it's, um, it gives you another player who's not a loner. Uh, but usually I would just soon take a rookie. Uh, I would just as soon take two mercenary goblins though, to be honest. And then that's 10k cheaper if you don't have the Nuffles altar. Uh, anyway... The Royal Rumble Boys did get a fair amount of SVP, though. Uh, I'm pretty sure none of this is on... Other than John Cena, I guess. No, actually, that's not John Cena. This guy is the one who died. I don't know what, which of these are Rodders and which of these are other players, so I don't know how much of this actually kept. But it looks good on the face of it. Nabla actually got... Wait, what? How did Nabla... Okay, that's actually really interesting. 
There wasn't an intercept, was there? No. Okay. So, here's how this happened. Because Nabla has a chainsaw, it is impossible for Nabla to get an SPP from blocking. But this is two blocking SPP. So here's how this happened. Someone went to hit Nabla and rolled a skull, and then broke armor on themselves, and then got badly hurt or worse from that. That is how Nabla got SPP here. I've seen it happen before, but it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> but it is great. It could have also been a boost down, actually. Nabla has block. Still, this is amazing. I kind of want to go and watch this game now. It, I don't. Th I think it's too late, though. Like, this was maybe may have been a loss for, say hello to my little friends. But this is a sort of loss that I think that goblins aspire to have. Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. Wrong Bhutan. Next game is Doom Anvils versus Pro in a Party. Which was a 1-1 draw between the Chaos Dwarves and the Pro Elves. Had to think about that for a second. Uh, let's look at my notes. It is... It was played at the last... Oh, actually, this game wasn't played either, was it? No, it wasn't. Another scheduling problem. I mean, it is the end of the year, so these things happen. But again, make sure you post in the... On Reddit. I think, in this case, probably both coaches did, and they just couldn't schedule it. That's probably what happened here. But still, make sure you post on Reddit. So you don't lose games when this sort of thing happens. A draw is still better than a loss. <laughs> and a win is better than a draw. But uh, yeah, that, that's how that works. Next up, the Grand Bleu versus Ken Tankerous Cretaceans. With the Wood Elves winning 4-1. to zero to one. What is going on here? This is the High Elf Shtick. Pro Elf Shtick? It is the pro in the party stick, the, the soul of Dragonfire plan, not Thessa. Thessa, you're not supposed to do this. At least you're not supposed to do this while also soul does not. There's just something wrong about this picture. <laughs> anyway, um, there was four scores and lots of arm breaks in both, for both sides. One expulsion. Uh, not a whole lot of permanent injuries. I don't think there were any, actually. Just some badly hurts inflicted by the by the elves, mostly. The blocks are actually fairly even, which for this matchup is really weird. But uh, I get the sense that the elves got some early removals and combine that with just elf bullshit and they scored like crazy. Probably early removals on skinks, if I had to guess, given the score. Uh, other than that... Uh... Yet another of Thessa's catchers got plus m movement. So now he has like two movement nine catchers, I think. And it's just... Man, this team. This team is gross. That's, that's how he's 4-1. Because he has two... He has two almost natural one-turners. And he can just score whenever he damn well wants. Like, he has two gutter runners, really, on an elf team. Except better gutter runners, because they're fucking elves. Well, I, are they better gutter runners? Uh, they have better skills than gutter runners, but they don't have mutation access. I guess that's 50-50. Anyway, finally, we have Grungy Desserts versus Corn's Glory, with Corn's Glory winning 1-2-0 against the other Nurgle team. So uh, they got to be happy about that. And Stoutagus has got to be a little sad, uh, especially once you look at his injuries. He His beast is missed in this game. He has a niggled rider. And he took minus strength on a Pestigore. And this this was the no reroll all positional team. And he just keeps losing positionals. So I gotta feel really bad for that. Uh, it, it's sort of brutal, but Nuffle give, gives and Nuffle takes away. And he's been doing a lot of taking away from Sadikus this season, it must be said. I'm sort of expecting a reroll. Nurgle is best on is best on their second or third season, but Staticus has just not really been getting enough development on his team, I think. Not with the amount of attrition he's been taking, anyway. Uh, although that is a lot of two different passes, man. Anyway, anyway, 
that pretty much concludes the quickie recap. So, uh, yeah. Sometime in the next two or three weeks, we're going to do one last big recap with me and Gengar and hopefully Nose Dice. At least two of, out of three. It might be Nose Dice and not Gengar, actually. We'll see. Uh, but until then, until we do that, whenever it will happen, uh, I hope this caught you. And I hope it was informative. And now I am done. So, bye! <laughs> Have good luck with your games.